The chair has been informed that not only have we reached the reduced quorum of 75, but we've reduced the actual normal quorum of 150. So the meeting will be called to order. Uh, I want to welcome everyone here, particularly those who are here for the first time to what the chair feels is our purest form of democracy, a New England type town meeting. Um, it's hard to believe it's really been two years since a lot of us have seen each other. We did not have a special town meeting in the fall of 2019. Obviously, the annual town meeting last year was put off because of COVID. We put it off till August. We had a very reduced quorum. We just did a central business. I think a quorum was 30 something. We had 60 people. So this is the first time we've gotten together as a group. Um, and despite the fact that it's a little hot, it feels good. And I will say that I'm told that because the power was knocked out in the building earlier when we, a good portion of the town lost power, um, it's, it's um, played some games with the air conditioning. So uh, let's hope it plays catch up uh, fairly soon. And uh, the moderator's leading by example. Um, uh, jackets are optional. Um, as we always do, a chair recognizes the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Dan Tribuco, and we'd ask that you stand if you're able to lead us with the Pledge of Allegiance. As we always do at the start of our annual town meeting, we always take a moment to take a moment of silence to recognize those who have been in service to the town of Pembroke who have passed away. Last August at our annual, we deferred, uh, considering the small crew, and we dedicated our moment of silence to other um, more timely at the time uh, reasons. And so um, we have a longer list than usual. The chair would like to recognize and ask that you keep them and their families in our prayers, those who have passed away over the last two years and they include many familiar names. Gail Burke, uh, Council on Aging volunteer. Bud Whitney, many of us knew well, uh, served for many years in the Pembroke Fire Department. Uh, Jackie Globin, uh, Pembroke Water Department, superintendent for many years, and a friend to many. Iris Copa Bianco, Council of Aging volunteer. Louise Tenderis, Pembroke Library and Council of Aging volunteer. Uh, George Bent, who served in the Town Memorial Committee and the American Legion. Frank Costa, Town Memorial Committee, and of course Frank was on the highway and fire departments. Um, and those are the members of our community who passed away in 2019. In 2020, we lost a dear friend, the chair, and someone who served on the planning board for many, many years, um, and that is Bill Buckley. Uh, Kathleen Cuneo, Pembroke Public Schools Food Service. Hank Daggett, Pembroke Fire Department, I think was one of our first DPW commissioners, if not serving on the first board. Bill Hussey, Town Forest, Pembroke Kiwanis Club. Anthony Carmen Nunes, Commission on Disabilities. Norman Pulaski, Pembroke Historical Society. David Summergrad, Pembroke Public Schools Elementary School Principal. And Bob Whitelaw, uh, a friend and former Pembroke selectman, he served as a uh, predecessor to the chair on the advisory committee back in the 80s. Um, <clears throat> chair, would... Why don't you just say it in the... Bob Skett, with a long time DPW worker, passed away last week. Thank you. Brad. And the chair would also uh, ask that we include in this moment of silence continued prayers and support for the Burroloni and Hickey families. The tragic accident that took the lives of Joey and Billy resulted in an unprecedented, but certainly not surprising, outpouring of support from every corner of this town. The tragedy happened back in April, and of course you still see signs of support all over town. Joey and Billy will always be a part of the fabric of our town, and I ask that we include them in this moment of silence. Thank you. I should also mention, you might have seen coming in, um, T-shirts for the Billy Hickey and Joey Berlini Hockey Scholarship Fund, which have the boys' numbers on them, are being sold 
by, uh, in the lobby for $20 each. Cash, Venmo, checks accepted. All proceeds will go to the scholarship fund. And the chair is also pleased um, to uh, remind you that um, just what we need for a long evening, um, caffeine and sugar, is being sold out in the lobby by Carol Dodge. Carol, um, we almost lost her last year, and she made it to our town meeting in August on a walker. She's back on full speed, and uh, she has been selling cookies, uh, donuts, and coffee in the lobby, all to benefit the Key Club since 1976. And other than last year, when we couldn't sell anything in the lobby, she's been doing it. So uh, please say hi to Carol, and, um, and she's out there. Um, the chair will... Um, state that the uh, chair is satisfied that the warrant has been duly posted, so we'll dispense with the reading of the warrant. Uh, the chair won't introduce everyone in front of us other than the mention, you'll hear their names during the course of the meeting. Uh, to the right is the advisory committee. Uh, in front of me is uh, the members of the Board of Selectmen. Chair is very pleased to have, uh, we've taken him out of retirement uh, and brought him back for this meeting. Joel Bard, our uh, former um, town council, um, still of, uh, Council to um, Kobelman and Page, and the planning board to the left. Um, the chair would also like to take a moment, since we were not together last year, to introduce someone who's been here, Bill, it's about a, a year maybe, give or take, um, and that is Bill Chenard, who is our town manager. He succeeded longtime town administrator, Ed Thorne. Bill took over about this time last year, uh, just when things were getting bad uh, with regard to the pandemic and its effect, particularly a financial effect on the town. Couldn't have taken over probably at a more difficult time. But um, he has led the town uh, along with his team successfully, gotten us through it. Um, he has been a pleasure to work with and I want to give him an official, year late, but an official welcome to the town of Pembroke. Uh, Chair also wants to mention that um, we have set up, and I'm not sure whether there's anyone in there, but we did set up the cafeteria for those who feel uh, that they don't want to be as, uh, sitting in the auditorium, those who aren't vaccinated. Um, I, we have uh, Steve Curley has been sworn in as an assistant moderator. He will take care of that room. If there anyone, even during the course of the meeting, feels they have to go in there, they're certainly welcome to it. Um, if you are in that room and you're speaking, you have to come and use the microphone at the back of this room. But we did set up for people who may be uncomfortable um, it's, it's still being in crowds. Um, and again, uh, I think we have a fair number of new people. Just very quickly, the procedure, if you want to speak, uh, you're more than welcome. I ask, even if you think we know who you are, to say who you are and, uh, and the street that you're from. And that's really for purposes of the clerk. And I don't know if we have any reporters covering this. No reporters seem to cover this town anymore. But um, if we do have any media uh, reporters uh, so they know who you are. And so we ask that you come to the microphones, give your name and street, um, and then you can address the town meeting through the chair. Uh, the only exception to that is if you want to raise a point of order, and the chair is somewhat liberal, liberal with regard to points of order. Um, if you don't understand what's going on, if you don't hear, if you have a question about procedure, if you have a question about a ruling that the chair made, just shout out point of order, Mr. Moderator, and then stand up and I'll recognize you. may have to ask you to go to the microphone. But other than that, if you are to speak, uh, if you want to speak um, from this body, uh, use either of these two microphones. We're going to save that microphone in the back just for people if there is anyone in the cafeteria. Um, and if it's difficult for you to get to the microphone, just raise your hand and we'll make sure we get the microphone to you. Um, the tellers have all been sworn in. They have their appointed uh, uh, areas. Um, as you know, we use the lottery system. Um, in fact, um, Pembroke is very high tech. We have ancient ping pong balls uh, as part of our lottery system and the communicate between the two rooms we're using like a 1967 Radio Shack walkie talkie um, since there's no phone service <laughs> in this part of the building, but it works. Um, and other than the budget and, the, and a few other items which I'll mention as we get through, um, we, we do use the lottery system. Um, and so I ask if you do not have a copy of the warrant, which includes the consent calendar and the special town meeting warrant, just raise your hands and the tellers will make sure they get them to you. Um, we are always pleased to have our legislative delegation who serves us so well at these town meetings. I see Representative Josh Cutler at the very back, who I know is in session today, and the chair would also like to welcome and 
uh, give the microphone uh, for some brief comments, our state senator, Senator Sue Moran. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Is that, okay, great. And also, thank you very much uh, to the town manager and select board members. And hi, Josh, back there. Oh, there you are. <laughs> anyway, uh, kudos to all of you to have made the larger quorum number. Uh, just an incredible amount of interest in town meeting. Uh, lots of interesting projects coming up. And here it is raining cats and dogs. So uh, you all are just incredibly impressive. I've done a, a bunch of town meetings, and, and this is just a huge showing. I promised two minutes, and I'm going to keep that uh, as quick as I can. So that's going to be the best part of the speech. It'll be short. I started the day at the Kit K-9 funeral at Gillette Stadium. And I want to recognize Fire Chief McCormick and Police Chief McDonald, who entered office during the midst of COVID and have served admirably through one of the most difficult and challenging periods of time. It's also a sign of the optimism and resiliency of the people of Pembroke that so many have made their way to town meeting tonight to be part of guiding the future of our community. Importantly, I want to thank the many healthcare professionals, first responders, teachers, small businesses, and workers without whom we would not be in a position to continue this community's recovery. With respect to a very short legislative report, I'll let you know that 150,000 will be delivered to Mass Military Support Foundation to provide food security for veterans and their families here in Pembroke and across the state. Another 150,000 will be allocated to begin the planning of a regional convention center for the Southeast, which will bring job creation and new business into Pembroke and our surrounding communities. We also secured $13.5 million in Chapter 78 and nearly, well, a million eight hundred and fifty thousand in unrestricted government aid that will give this community the fuel to continue our recovery and lay a foundation for future growth. Again, cheers to all of you for showing up in the rain to do the business of Pembroke. I serve you. Please feel free to reach out to my office if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions, and have a very successful town meeting. Thank you, Senator. Appreciate you coming. One public service announcement, Pembroke Celebrates announces the return of their annual fireworks. We celebrate the people of Pembroke Saturday, September 18th, yes. Um, at the high school athletic field, fog is not allowed. It's five to eight family tailgating and activities after sunsets around 8 p.m. of the fireworks. So we look forward to that and thanks for all who make that happen. We missed it last year. Um, one other procedural matter uh, and we'll get right into it. Um, many of the articles require a two thirds vote. And so as is customary, uh, the chair asks the meeting to give the moderator the permission to declare a two-thirds vote so we don't have to do a standing vote every time a two-thirds vote is required. And believe me, the chair, if there's any question, you can question the chair, but if it's close, then we'll call for a standing vote. So Mr. Tribuco moves that if a two-thirds vote is required by statute, the moderator is authorized to declare a two-thirds vote if, after a show of hands, the moderator determines that the two-thirds majority has been reached, provided, however, that if a vote so declared is immediately questioned by seven or more voters, the moderator shall verify the two-thirds majority by ordering a standing count of the yeas and nays. Is there a second? Chair has second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And the only exception to our lottery system is the wage and personnel classification plan and the budget, and we'll take those as Article 1 and 2. So to get us going, the chair recognizes uh, Steve Walsh from advisory. Article 1, move that the town amends schedules A, B, and C of the classification and compensation bylaws 
according to the schedule listed in Appendix A, and to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provided $20,785 to the fund at the changes and further authorize the town account to allocate the funds to the appropriate budget items voted under Article 2 of this meeting. Such changes will take effect July 1st, 2021. Is there a second? Second. Chair has second. <clears throat> the way we traditionally do this, if you go to the back of your warrant um, in Appendix A, we will take each compensation uh, schedule separately. We won't read the numbers. We'll just take them as a group. If there's any questions or any changes or any amendments, please shout them out so, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll take them individually. So the first item will be annual salary schedule A. Again, this is the back of your warrant. Full-time offices and employees, is there any question? Um, the meeting will be in a brief recess. Yeah, we just have a procedural, uh, and it's important when we're talking about money, so just to clarify, so the advisory knows, Chair recognizes Town Council Joel Bard. Moderator, thank you, Joel Bard, Town Council. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't see this earlier, but the motion should specify the funding source. The article lists several, but I understand the funding source is to transfer from free cash rather than that laundry list, if you will. So, so just um, specify transfer from free cash and not the raise and appropriate and, and other sources. So can we just amend it to and raise an appropriate transfer from free cash or otherwise provide? Is that? No, just transfer from free cash. Just transfer from free cash, okay. All right, so we'll take the article as amended. Um, and so we'll do um, first uh, Schedule A. Uh, any question on that? Um, all those in favor, say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Salary Schedule B, appointed part-time officers and employees. Any question? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Um, compensations, uh, hourly wage Schedule C for full-time and part-time employees. Any question or amendment? Seeing none, all those, in, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Uh, annual salary schedule T, uh, D for elected full-time, part-time officials. Any question? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. And I declare it so voted. Article 2. Chair recognizes Linda Peterson, chair person of the advisory committee. Mr. Moderator, move that the town appropriate the sum of $66,305,732 to fund the operating expenses of the town for the fiscal year 2022 as listed under Appendix D of the 2021 Annual Town Meeting Warrant, column headed FY 2022 request, and to fund this appropriation and raise the appropriate from taxation the sum of $64,224,351 and transfer the following sums. Capital stabilization, $25,000. Ambulance fund, $11,071. Septic loan program, $93,360. Recreation revolving, the fields, $10,600. Age on, Council on Aging Transportation, $102,177. School Athletic Fund, 74875 Recreation Revolving Clerical, 46088 School Construction Funds, 73360 Water Enterprise Indirect, 477040 Solid Waste Enterprise Indirect, 54310 Cemetery Trust Funds, 25731 Regional ACO, 38,659. American Rest Rescue Plan, Act of 2021, 249,110. Is there a second? 
chair here is second. Um, the way we do this is we'll go, it, it's a little tedious, but um, the chair believes this is the best way to do, do it, to give everyone the option of amending uh, or, or asking questions on a particular budget line item if they so choose. So we'll do it, I'll do it by a show of hands. Uh, I'm sorry, I won't do it by a show of hands. I'll do it by a call of the A's and A's. Um, Tom bylaw requires that we do in the first instance every vote by a show of the, a show of hands actually. But um, the chair believes we all end up at the chiropractor after doing this um, uh, budget uh, by a show of hands. So we'll call for a share of, uh, just a uh, call of the A's and A's. So we'll do it by department. First item is moderator, personal services, electorate, hundred dollars. And again, if there is a question, I'm gonna go through this quickly. So if there's a question, please just shout out. And there is a question, it's okay. The, the chair um, has been informed that there might be a typo um, in the Warren articles that you have. It's Appendix B, B as in Bob, is the appendix that has all of the budget items in it. So first one is moderator, um, personal services elected $100. Any question, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Select board, personnel services 9,000, uh, personal services 9,000, Personal services, I'm sorry, personal services elected 9,000, personal services 178,227, general expenses 10,400, purchase of services 102,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Town manager, personnel services 154,900, general expenses 3,350. Any question? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Advisory Committee, personal services 6,000, general expenses 500, reserve funds 66,350. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Town Accountant, personal services 157,951, general expenses 50,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Board of Assessors, personal services elected 5,400, Personal services, 265,687. General expenses, 43,600. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Oppose, no, the ayes have it. Treasurer, collector, personal services, 388,036. General expenses, 79,700. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Oppose, no, the ayes have it. Legal, purchase of services, 115,000. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Oppose, no, the ayes have it. Information technology, personal services, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not, uh, general expenses, 97,900. There is a question. Please, if you could go to the microphone and state your name. And... Matthew. Mr. Moderator, Matthew McNeely, 4 High Street. Uh, my question basically is what are we getting or what are we purchasing under information technology for an additional $30,000 over last year. Chair recognizes Bill Chenard. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Chair. What it is is it's our Office 365 licenses and our server licenses for the Windows servers. They're, they've all increased. Any further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Town Clerk, personal services elected, 88,961. Personal services, 51,882. General expenses, 10,006. Any question? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Elections, personal services, 18,000. General expenses, 15,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Registrations, personal services, 7,600. General expenses, 5,200. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Conservation Commission, general expenses, $900. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Planning Board, general expenses, $2,750. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Zoning Board of Appeals, general expenses, $2,500. All those in favor, please say aye. 
oppose, no, the ayes have it. Town building maintenance, personal services, 192,959. General expenses, 95,505. Any question, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Police department, personal services, 3,754,369. General, general expenses, 303,610. Any question? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Fire Department, personal services, 3,686,439. General expenses, 152,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Inspectional services, personal services, 454,547. General expenses, 17,450. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Emergency management, personal expenses, Services, 4,250. General expenses, 10,001. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Animal control officer, personal services, 52,036. General expenses, 10,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Public works, personal services, 959,712. General expenses, 290,525. Snow and sanding, $175,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Townwide utilities, general expenses, $197,950. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Board of Health, general expenses, $25,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Council on Aging, personal services, 225,751. General expenses, 40,675. Senior tax program, $5,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Veteran services, personal services, 74,002. General expenses, 1,950. General relief, $115,000. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Commission on Disabilities, general expenses, $500. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Library, personal services, 591053 General expenses, 65900 Books, 90000 Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Lydia Drake Library, general expenses, $5,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Recreation Commission, personal services, 112,689. General expenses, 9,220. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Community Center, general expenses, 42,550. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Herring Fisheries, general expenses, $1,800. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Town Landing, personal services, 40,000. General expenses, 1,500. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Town Clock Winder, personal services, $1,525. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. It's the chair's favorite line item. Town Memorial Committee, general expenses, $4,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Plymouth County Cooperative, general expenses, 107. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Historical Commission, general expenses, $1,000. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Maturing debt principal, general expenses, $835,980. Any question? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Maturing debt excluded, general expenses, $1,470,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Maturing debt interest, general expenses, $197,676. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Maturing debt interest, general expenses, $356,350. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Short-term interest, general expenses, $25,000. Uh, 
Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Retirement general expenses, $3,990,309. Any question? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Unemployment compensation, general expenses, $120,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, the ayes have it. Health insurance, general expenses, $8,000,000. 806,968. Is there any question? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Life insurance, general expenses, 20,000. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Medicare tax, general expenses, $545,000. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Property and liability insurance, general expenses, 690,000. Uh, 380. Any question? All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Last line, item, last line item, school general fund. Oh, no, that's the total, right? No, no, that's the schools. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, 35,500,000. Is there any question on that line item? The chair recognizes Doc Iacobucci. I didn't see any personnel expenses for the Board of Health where I saw them for every other department. Does that mean the Board of Health is now volunteering and working for free? Chair Poor Lisa. Chair recognizes Bill Shenard. Did I say my name? I forgot. I said your name. All right. Dr. Iacobucci, 172 Washington Street, Pembroke. One of the biggest taxpayers in town. So, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> you cut me off guard there. Um, so the, Depart the public work, excuse me, the Board of Health salaries are included in the Department of Municipal Inspections budget. So uh, several years ago in the town of Pembroke, we uh, took all of our, our admins from planning, zoning, Board of Health, building and conservation and included them in one Department of Municipal Inspection budget. So they are not working for free. Um, they are included in this budget. Um, now the chair is in question. Did we do the school budget? I, no. No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, school general fund, thirty-five million five hundred thousand dollars. Any question? I thought we did this. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? No. The ayes have it. On the main motion made by Linda Peterson to adopt the school, bu the town budget, uh, which has been seconded, seeing no further debate, all those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Uh, we would normally go to the lottery system. Um, actually, we have a special. We have a special. Let's do the special. Okay. Um, we have a special town meeting posted for 7:30, and so we will take that now. The special town meeting warrant is included in your other warrant. Mandy. First item of business is Article 2. And the chair recognizes Steve Walsh from advisory. Move that the town appropriate a sum of $39,687 from the overlay surplus to fund the new collective bargaining agreement between the town of Pembroke and AFSCME Local 1700 Clerical and Public Works for the period from July 1, 2020 to June 30th, 2021, and further to appropriate a sum of $227,568 from the overlay surplus to fund the new collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Pembroke and the International Association of Firefighters, AFL-CIO, CLC, Local 2351, from the period from July 1, 2019 to June 30th, 2021, and to further appropriate a sum of $10,963 from the water retained earnings surplus to fund the new collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Pembroke and AFSCME Local 1700 Water Enterprise for the period from July 1, 2020 to June 30th, 2021. 
Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion made by Steve Walsh, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it and I declare it, declare it so voted. Article one in the special. Mr. Mr. Chair recognizes Linda Peterson. Move that the sum of 127032 is appropriated to do supplemental fiscal year 2021 appropriations and to fund these supplementals that 7032 be transferred from the assessor's wages and salaries to the assessor's general expenses, 20000 to be transferred from free cash to elections, 25000 to be transferred from free cash to data processing, 25000 be transferred from DPW wages and salaries to DPW general expenses, and 50000 be transferred from Water Ex Enterprise Fund wages and salaries to Water Ca Enterprise Capital. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion by Linda Peterson, please raise your hand. Opposed, no. Please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Next item is Article 3. Uh, before the chair recognizes John Scholl from the advisory, uh, the chair would just mention that this article was filed by the town clerk. The chair takes no position on this article. The chair is okay with one year, with three years, has not weighed in one way or the other, so the chair feels that he can adequately and independently and impartially moderate this particular article. Chair recognizes John Shore. Sh uh, Shoal, sorry. Hi, everybody. It's great to see everybody. Uh, um, change town moderator's term to three years. Move that the town ch change the elected position of the town mar moderator from the current one year term to that of a three year term. Okay. Is there any discussion? I would just no, ask you you got it. Chair recognizes uh, Matt. Not too bad. I would just, you know, for years we've had the, the one year. I just didn't know if there's a particular reason why we felt, you know, other than Steve doesn't want to have his signs out every year or, you know. Chair, chair, chair recognizes Peg Struzik. I was my idea. I, it wasn't Steve's idea. Okay, It's no. just that taken to the, the last two years' history, you have to go out and you have to get signatures. He's running around trying to get it done. You, at this point, you're knocking on doors. Um, people don't want to answer the door. And he's running every year. We've had two moderators, I think, in 50 years. Right, So absolutely. it just makes sense to move it to three years. Okay. Okay, thank you, Matt. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion made by John Scholl, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Four. <laughs> now the moderator makes a mistake after being given. Did we just have three? That was just yeah, three. Yeah, oh, it was just but three. Okay. But was, now we're going to do this. We one. used to have four. All right. We'll go back to the special uh, to the annual town meeting. Uh, the, the the chair will declare the special town meeting adjourned. Um, again, normally uh, we would take um, the articles all in the lottery uh, fashion, but we've had one request, and why don't you make the motion and explain why? I'd like to make a motion to take Article 19 out of order. Article 19 deals with the amended uh, zoning bylaw to create a new flood plan protection. This article needs to be done immediately as if we don't get this article into the National Flood Plan Insurance Company tomorrow, the people in town who need flood insurance will no longer be able to get it. So it's got to be something we have to do immediately. Thank you. So the town bylaws require a four-fifths to take anything out of order. So all those in favor of taking Article 19 out of order, taking up right away, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. And the chair declares it unanimous, which is better than four-fifths. Uh, so the chair will, will go immediately to Article 19, and the chair recognizes, who's moving? The chair recognizes Dan Taylor, uh, chairman of the planning board.
Can you hear me now? Perfect. All right. Uh, move that the town amend the Pembroke zoning bylaws by deleting sections 3-6 and section V-2 and replacing section V point section 5-2 with a new section 5-2 as printed in article 19 of the 2021 annual town meeting warrant. Is there a second? Chair, um, the chair recognizes Bill Chenard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to make three quick points and then let us vote. Um, the first point is this is required. This is a, a FEMA every few years changes their, their floodplain maps. Um, it is critical for those hundred or so residents of the town that are within floodplains. Without it, the National Flood Insurance Program would not be eligible to them. So I want to implore that we do indeed vote for this. I know that uh, one of our neighbors voted against it. Um, there were some social and economic issues there where different groups of town meeting and some trust issues. Trust me, this is we are not a, a uh, community that is Oceanside. Uh, we don't have those same issues in Pembroke. And those folks that need this for their protection of their homes and, quite frankly, for their mortgages, um, it's absolutely critical. So thank you, and I please support this. Is there any further discussion or questions on this article, which does require a two-thirds vote? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion made by Dan Taylor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declared it passing, reaching the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Now the lottery. That's, that's consent, right? Uh, so, the, ironically, the first one pulled out is the consent article, um, and you've got the consent motion uh, in, your, in your warrant. Uh, the town passed this bylaw a number of years ago so we could combine and take up as one uh, several non-controversial articles. Uh, it does require a four-fifths. We'll just do one vote on four-fifths. So again, the four articles will be taken out of order, and it's your call. Um, if you choose not to take them out of order, that's perfectly acceptable, and we'll just put them back in the, in the, in the container uh, and take them lottery. But, um, so Article 7, which is the Community Cent Preservation Fund Allocations, These, this article does not fund projects. It's just the state law requires a minimum amount of CPC funds be set aside each year. So it's a routine article. Article 8. Uh, is sets revolving fund limits. Again, it's not an appropriation. It just funds limits. We must do, must do that each year. Article 25 um, is a holdover from the last two centuries ago when people, um, down, town departments used to give actual reports on the town meeting floor. That was before even John Walsh's time. And Article 26 is the annual town election, which is technically part of the warrant. So is there any objection to taking those as one item? Seeing none, all those in favor of the consent items on the agenda, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. And I declare it so voted unanimous. Article 9 is the next item of business. Chair recognizes Steve Walsh from advisory. Move that the town appropriate a sum of 59235 from overlay surplus to fund the new collective bargaining agreement between the town of Pembroke and AFSCME Local 1700 Clerical and Public Works for the period from July 1, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. And further, to appropriate a sum of $16,363 from the water retained earnings surplus to fund the new collective bargaining agreement between the town of Pembroke and AFSCME Local 1700 Water Enterprise for the period from July 1, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any question or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Steve Walsh, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Uh, the chair would also point out a new feature to this town meeting, and that obviously you've seen, um, and that's the closed captioning. The chair thanks those responsible for it. Um, we hope it is a benefit to those here and those particularly watching uh, PAC TV uh, at home. So, uh, Article 15 is the next article. Uh, 
And the chair recognizes Andrew Wandell, vice chair of the planning board. Uh, move that the town amend the Pembroke zoning bylaws section two definitions by inserting in alphabetical order the underlying text as printed in article 15 of the 2021 annual town meeting warrant. Motions are made and seconded. Chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Yeah, what this does is uh, provides a definition for residential affordable housing development which is going to come up in a couple of subsequent articles tonight. Is there any discussion? Chair recognizes select person Betty Coletta. Is there any reason why we couldn't take all of the related articles together, given that passing one of these articles won't effectively change the bylaw to achieve the purpose? The chair would say that was discussed prior to this meeting, and it would require a fourth, fifth for every one of the article, and um, it's, it's up to the meeting. We can take the articles out of order. Um, assuming they all pass, then we should be okay. But um, the chair would entertain a motion to take an article out of order if someone wants to move it. Any further discussion on this article? Seeing none, although, again, again it requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Article 5. Chair recognizes Linda Peterson. Mr. Moderator. I move the Article 5 as printed in the town warrant. Uh, I believe it will show up on line by line for those, or do, I, do you want me to read it? Are we okay with not reading it? No, I think the chair would suggest that we read the, the motion, even though it is. Read it. Yeah. Article 5, move that the town appropriate 3,734,100 3, 3, for the capital project set forth in Appendix E of the annual town meeting warrant that to meet this appropriation, the town, one, transfer 288,100 from free cash to the projects and in the amounts listed under the column free cash as printed in Appendix E of the annual town meeting warrant. Two, transfer 25,000 from unexpended bond uh, proceeds from the town's municipal purpose loan of 2013 bond for the prospect projects entitled Pembroke Public Schools Security Cameras as listed under the column reappropriate as printed in Appendix E of the annual town meeting warrant. Three, authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow 2183000 under chapter 44, section seven of the general laws or any other enabling authority for the projects and in the amounts listed under the columns general fund borrowing and ambulance borrowing as printed in appendix E of the annual town meeting warrant. Any bonds or notes issued for such projects shall be general obligations of the town and debt service shall be payable from the general fund. Four, authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow 1,200,000 under chapter 44, section eight of the general laws or any other enabling authority for the projects and in the amounts listed under the column water enterprise borrowing as printed in appendix E of the annual town meeting warrant provided that while any such bonds or notes issued for such projects shall be general obligations of the town, payment of the debt service shall be made in the first distance from the water enterprise funds, and five, authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow $37,500 $37, under chapter 44, section seven of the general laws, or any other enabling authority for the project entitled Solid Waste Enterprise Toter Bins, as listed under the column Solid Waste Enterprise Borrowing, as printed in Appendix C of the Annual Town Meeting Warrant, provided that while any such bonds or notes issued for such projects shall be general obligations of the town, pay 
payment of the debt service shall be made in the first instance from the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund any, that any premium received by the town upon the sale of the bonds or notes appro such bonds or notes as applied to the payment of cost approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by an amount and the authorize the town manager to take any other action necessary or convenient to carry out these projects. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion on the items in the capital budget? This does require two thirds as well. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, I declare it, having reached the two thirds necessary for passage. Article 13. Move that the town Tim, amend. Chair recognizes Tim Landy. Oh, sorry. Move that the town amend Article 20, Section 8 of the Bylaws of the Town of Pembroke, entitled Police Regulations, by deleting the words shown in the strike through and adding in place thereof the words shown in the bold as printed in Article 13 of the 2021 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. All those, just takes a simple majority, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it and I declare it so voted. Article 17. Chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Move that the town amend the Pembroke zoning bylaws section 4.5.B, industrial district B, uses allowed by special permit by inserting the underlying text as printed in article 17 of the 2021 annual town meeting warrant. What this- Motion is made and seconded. The chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Okay. What this would do is allow residential affordable housing developments in industrial district B. Chair record. Chair recognizes I'm Judy, Judy Parks. Oh, Judy Parks, I'm sorry. From Brick Hill Lane. I'm the Judy. chair of the Affordable Housing Committee. Um, the committee's goal this year is to really for, for, uh, increase the number of affordable housing units Judy, a little closer to 15% of the town's inventory. Um, and we felt that larger developments uh, really belong in an industrial or commercial zone as opposed to residential streets, as we all are experiencing right now. Um, and so we felt that with the um, experience we've had with the larger developments in the commercial and residential commercial zones, that an appropriate place to put these would be in the industrial zones. Any further question? Seeing none, this requires a two-thirds vote. It amends a bylaw. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds needed for passage. Article 14. Move that the town accept the provision. Chair, let me just recognize you first, Andy. Chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Move that the town accept the provisions of General Law C.44, Section 55C, and establish a municipal affordable housing trust for the preservation and creation of affordable housing in the town of Pembroke for the benefit of low and moderate income households. Uh, this came about as part yeah, let's, of the- Let's get a second. Oh. Motion's been seconded. Chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Okay. This came about uh, because we created the Pembroke Housing Production Plan. This is part of um, goal two. Uh, in addition, we've also set up um, some requirements for the cluster zoning last year that we passed where the requirement is to uh, provide some affordable housing as part of cluster zoning. Uh, the developers do have the option of not building that housing, but uh, donating money instead, and we needed a place to put that and to manage that. Any further discussion? Seeing none, this just takes a simple majority vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 20.
The chair recognizes Dan Taylor. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town amend the public zoning bylaw section five, I'm sorry, section four dot five dot A dot six, industrial district A, uses allowed by inserting the underlying text as printed in article 20 of the annual town meeting warrant. Chair recognizes Dan Taylor. Uh, this uh, zoning bylaw amendment would actually uh, prohibit one and two family homes in industrial A. Um, it corrects some previous language and it also would encourage uh, larger development in that area. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Dan Taylor, this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds voted for passage. By the way, I think the chair is correct in stating that in all these articles, the planning board has to take a vote, and that's happened, right? And has voted to support all of these articles, and the chair uh, was remiss in not stating that. Article 12. And the chair recognizes Sandy Beaton from advisory. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer the sum of $2,583 from the open space fund for the purchase of equipment to make improvements and aid in the upkeep of town open spaces and trails as printed in Article 12 of the 2021 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion or question? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article, oh, we did Article 2, right? Yeah, okay. Article 23. Chair recognizes Dan Taylor from Planning Board. Um, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town amend the Pembroke Zoning Bylaws Section 2, definitions in Section 4, dimensional regulations by deleting strike through text and inserting the underlying text as printed in Article 23 of the annual town meeting warrant. Chair recognizes Dan Taylor. Uh, this this uh, amendment would update definition, definitions of kennels and other pet services. It would allow a wider variety of facilities by special permit and specifies where they are allowed. Uh, the planning board does recommend favorable action. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? This requires a two-thirds. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Article 11. Chair recognizes Tim Landy from advisory. Move that the town appropriate $75,000 to fund the cost of preparation for an updated master plan for the town of Pembroke including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that the meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the selectmen is authorized to borrow amount, set amount under the pursuant, and pursuant to Mass General Law, chapter 44, subsection seven, parenthesis seven, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes to the town, therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote Less any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of insurance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapters 44, Subsection 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by like amount. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. This requires a two-thirds because it authorizes borrowing. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Article 6. The chair recognizes Sandy Beaton. 
Mr. Moderator, I move that the town appropriate and transfer from free cash the sum of $125,000 to be added to the other post-employment benefits liability fund established by the vote of Article 11 of the April 24, 2012 annual town meeting. And further, that the sum of $125,000 be appropriated and transferred from free cash to be added to the amount voted in Article 16 of the November 4, 2003 special town meeting to fund separation pay benefits. And further, that the sum of $30,000 be appropriated and transferred from free cash to be added to the capital stabilization fund established by the vote of Article 22 of the May 8, 2018 town meeting. And that the sum of $25,000 be appropriated and transferred from free cash to be added to the stabilization fund. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Requires majority vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 18. Chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Move that the town amend the Pembroke zoning bylaws, section 5, special provisions, standards, and procedures by adding a new subsection 14, residential affordable housing development special permit by inserting the text as printed in article 18 of the 2021 annual town meeting warrant. Motion has been seconded. The chair recognizes Andy Wandel. Uh, this is, establishes um, residential housing to be allowed by special permit in certain zones of the town with the planning board being the special permitting authority. And this has been a, uh, recommended by the planning board. Uh, any further discussion? Or any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, again, requires a two-thirds. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. The town clerk informs me 335 people are in attendance at this meeting. So thank you. Next article is Article 4. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. The chair recognizes Matt um, Norton from advisory. Move that the town appropriate the sum of $2,200,760 from solid waste revenue to fund the FY22 Solid Waste Enterprise Fund as shown in Appendix D of the 2021 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none. Um, all those in favor of the motion by Matthew, please raise your hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 21. Chair recognizes Dan Taylor. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town amend Pembroke zoning bylaws section four dash five dash a dash six industrial district B uses allowed by inserting the underlying text as printed in article 21 of the annual town meeting warrant. Motion has been made and seconded. The chair recognizes Dan Taylor. Uh, yeah, once again, this would amend the zoning bylaws in industrial district B prohibiting one and two family homes and correcting language from previous bylaw changes and encouraging uh, development. Any discussion on this article? Seeing none, once again requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Article one, we did. Article 22, Chair recognizes Dan Taylor. Uh, Mr. Moderator, move that the town amend the Pembroke Zoning Bylaws Section 4-8-E-6, Water Resource and Groundwater Protection District by inserting the underlying text as printed in Article 22 of the Annual Town Meeting Warrant. 
Motion's been made and seconded. The chair recognizes Dan Taylor. Uh, this bylaw amendment would allow certain portions of open space and cluster subdivisions to be in the water resource or groundwater protection district. Any discussion or questions on this matter? Seeing none, requires a two thirds. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two thirds necessary for passage. Article 24. This is the article that appropriates various sums for different projects that are funded by the community preservation uh, charge. Um, and we will treat each of these as a separate article, a separate item. So to make a motion and recommendation A, and all the recommendations, all the motions, uh, Lynn, uh, Lisa Cullity, who was chairman of the Pembroke Community Preservation Committee. And just as a point of interest to the body of the town meeting, um, based on the fact that I received calls and emails just prior to town meeting, people were asking what leads the CPC group to endorse articles. We do not endorse articles. This money is tax money of the town of Pembroke. Um, it's also tax money that's matched by the state. So this is your tax dollars. We do not endorse these articles. We do not move forward one article over another. This is merely articles that have met the qualifications. That's one of the rules for CPC. The second is that it has a budget put forward with it of how it will accomplish the work. And the last part is that there's actually funds available. We cannot put forth articles we cannot fund. So at a certain point when the money is potentially used up, we will not move forward new articles within that round. So whether or not you feel these articles are deserving of your money is 100% up to you. We just basically vet them and make sure they qualify. So without further ado, recommendation A, Mr. Moderator. So move that the town appropriate the sum of $50,000 from the open space reserve and that said funds be granted to open space committee for the existing conditions and master concept plan to include the demolition of the existing house on the Arthur and Michelle Lagi property located at 190 Barker Street for open space purposes. Motions been made and seconded. Any discussion or questions? All these require a simple majority vote. All those in favor of the motion by Lisa Cullody, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declared it so voted. Recommendation B, the chair recognizes Lisa Cullody. Move that the town appropriate the sum of $5,000 from the undesignated reserve fund and that said funds be granted to the Pembroke Historical Society for technical assistance for a feasibility study for historical preservation purposes. Motions are made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Recommendation C, the chair recognizes Lisa Cullity. Move that the town appropriate the sum of $50,000 from the end designated reserve fund and that send funds be granted to the Pembroke Historical Society for the rep repairing in, of the stone wall and the removal of poison ivy from the Friends Meeting House for historical preservation purposes. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, I declare it so voted. Recommendation D, the chair recognizes Lisa Cullity. Move that the town appropriate the sum of $12,536 from the Open Space Reserve Fund and that said funds be granted to the Pembroke Recreation Department for installation of safety rails behind dugouts and audience bleachers at the Mattachusett Street ball fields for recreational purposes. Motions are made and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Article 16. Chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Move that the town amend the Pembroke Zoning Bylaws Section 4.5.B, Industrial District A, uses allowed by special permit by inserting the underlying text as printed in the Article 16 of the 2021 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Motions and made and seconded. The chair recognizes Andy Wandell. Uh, this would allow by special permit only residential affordable housing developments 
in Industrial District A. Any discussion on this item, which does require a two-thirds vote? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Andy Wandell, please raise your hand. All those opposed to the motion, the ayes have it, and I declare it so voted, having reached the necessary two-thirds necessary for passage. Article 27. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, so the chair will recognize, um, for purposes of making the motion first, um, a, um, Andrew Wheeler, who is chairman of the Community Center Task Force. I'm Sullivan, I'm sorry, Andrew Wheeler, Andrew Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Article 27, move that the town of Pembroke vote to appropriate the sum of $19 million for the purpose of paying costs to design and construct a new community center to replace the existing facility and to demolish or remodel, reconstruct, add to, and originally equip the existing Pembroke Community Center and Senior Center, and for the payment of all other costs, incidental and related thereto, and to meet said appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said sum under MGL Chapter 44 or any other enabling authority provided that the appropriation hereunder shall be subject to and contingent upon an affirmative vote of the town to exempt the amounts required for the payment of the principal and interest on said borrowing from the limitations on taxes imposed by MGL Chapter 59, Section 21C, Proposition 2 and a half. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote Less any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Motion's been made and seconded. The proponents of this article have requested, and um, the, the chair has granted, a permission to do a short video um, that the chair believes will answer a lot of the questions that may come up during the course of discussion. Of course, debate is welcome and questions are welcome. So we'll watch that short video now. I'm not Today we will be discussing the feasibility study and recommendations put forth by the Pembroke Community Center Task Force to replace the current facility. At the upcoming annual town meeting, Pembroke residents will be asked to vote on Article 27 to determine if the town will appropriate monies to design and construct a new community center. If approved at town meeting, this question will also be on the spring town election ballot. I'm joined today by Andrew Sullivan, Chair of the Pembroke Community Center Task Force, and Bill Chenard, Pembroke Town Manager. We've studied this thing for a long time uh, and right now we're at a point where the study committee has developed the study, they've interacted with the public, they've interacted with the two departments and the select board uh, that are moving into this building. These two, these two buildings are very old, um, very inefficient and, and really need to be, re, as you said, renovated or replaced. It's determined through study that the most efficient process would be to replace them. There's a Many people in, in Pembroke that say, we can wait. We could wait another couple of years. We don't have to do this now. What is, what is your point counterpoint to that for people that say, we really could wait another couple of years? Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's long overdue. I mean, it's never a great time to tackle a, a big, challenging project like this. But the committee works that's been done for 20 years now. I mean, the building has way outlived its life cycle. You know, the seniors, there's over 4,000 seniors over the age of 65 in the town of Pembroke. Yep. We have a very small council on aging building. They do an awesome job with the little space they have. 
but we've only identified about a couple hundred people that make use of that facility. Most of our seniors now travel to other towns to right. use their facilities, their council and agings, and we deserve our own. Our seniors need a place in our town. So mm -hmm. seniors alone is reason enough to get in to tackle this today. Bill, we're coming out of a, a worldwide pandemic, a really, really fragile time for a lot of people. Why now? So the, the simple answer is we will likely never be able to do this again at this cost, this price. And, and it's not the cost of the building, it's not the interest rates, it's the package together. Think about interest rates and where interest rates have been. You know, go back to, to 1990 and think about where interest rates have been and for, for mortgages. That's the easiest comparison. We're not going to see these numbers for, I don't believe we're going to see these numbers for, for a very long time. And if we do delay this two, three years, those interest rates are likely going to climb where, and, and I, I, I had a note, I made it for myself just so I would know. If you add a half a percentage point to the project, you're adding $1.235 million. And that's just the interest rate. Oh. So that's huge, yeah. huge, huge, huge. And the interest rates have been stable for a while, and we think we can get in at that number. The 2% we're using is still conservative and above where current interest rates are. So very important consideration. I, I know people are struggling, but the fact of the matter is these buildings are struggling too, and, and the town can add programming at probably the lowest cost. We'll be able to do it for many, many, many years. Clearly one of the most important decisions was to combine the senior center with the community center. This option not only saves money and resources, but provides for multi-generational programming that can run from morning to evening based on the need, the interest, and even the audiences. The architectural design for the center includes classrooms and computer rooms for continuing education or after school study, art rooms, activity spaces and game rooms, a gymnasium, a kitchen, cafe and offices. The gymnasium, kitchen, and bathroom facilities also make this building more conducive to emergency management needs, such as cooling stations and a shelter during other emergencies. At 33,000 square feet, this proposed building has something basically for everyone. It'll be safe, inviting, and available to the entire community. It will also create a landmark in the center of town, a place to walk, to relax, and to celebrate events such as the annual arts festival and Christmas tree lighting. Beautifying our center will also promote Pembroke as an up-and-coming area which could attract new and diverse businesses to Pembroke. Can we just talk about the fire and the police stations have been looked at for a number of years. They're, they're old, they're, they either have to be renovated or replaced. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a lot of, of talk of residents that that's more important. Can you talk about why that, why this is happening now and that would have to happen down the road? So I, I think why this is happening now is because this project is slightly ahead of that project from, from a study point with, with the committee. I know there have been several studies on the police and fire. Yep. Um, we want to finalize that and, and we're not going to leave that off the table. We're going to focus on that too. I, I think there's a good opportunity as we look at our debt curves to fit that in and, and not be a huge additional cost to taxpayers. So I think that's important. Residents clearly want to know what's this going to cost me? Sure. So, so what it's going to cost the residents, we have a terrific chart on the town's website. Um, the, the average is $423,000, that's the average assessment, $423,000, that's the average assessment. That would transact to $133.25 in an annual cost. So if you pay on your mortgage monthly, you can divide that by 12, calculate mm -hmm. what it is. Or if you pay quarterly, divide it by 4 and you can calculate what it is. For the average taxpayer, that's really a modest, modest increase. And the services that you're going to get from that increase are huge. There's, there's no membership fees or anything else associated with that. What about the other things that we already have on the books that we're paying for? When, when, is the, when are things going to come off the books to offset this? So what we're looking at is we have several school projects and roofing projects that are, that are debt exclusions. And if we look at our debt curve, our debt curve is here now. Over the next five years, we're going to start to see that debt curve come down here. We're going to drop almost a million dollars off of that debt curve, which is why we can fit in the police and fire as that starts to fall off. Okay. And, and if you look at that, that gap, 
you, you just put the police and fire in there and it isn't a huge increase to taxpayers. Okay. So, so we can do it if we plan it correctly and, okay. I, and I think that's important. We, we've, we've got solid management. I think we can move forward with those programs. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that uh, at town meeting this passes, at the ballot box this also passes, so we now have a project that can move forward. What are the next steps that happen and what's the timeline? So, so the next steps are we complete the construction documents and go out to bid for the project. We borrow the money. Um, those are both critically important tasks to do as quickly as we possibly can so that we can take advantage of the current bond market and construction costs. Uh, I know there's concerns with the construction market out there. Um, I think if we do this in a quick and timely manner, uh, we can get the project completed under budget. What if all the bids come over what was approved uh, at, at town meeting and therefore at the ballot box? So at that point, the town has two choices. The town can go back and look at our, our construction documents and see, is there a way, change some of the, the, the cost items so that we can bring the bids down to okay. a point where we can do it under budget, or one of the safeguards for residents is we can't, if we're going to stay with that plan, we can't move forward with the project without going back to town meeting and, and asking them to reauthorize the, the, the project at the cost of that time where the bids are. We've been working at this for three years. Yeah. We have met with everyone. We have had town forums. We have met with all the different committees. What really gave me a boost was the select board unanimously recommended this project. The select board and advisory are by, behind this 100%. Okay. I would hope that would give the residents some confidence that our town leaders who have been with us every step of the way mm -hmm. see it, understand it, and know that this is the right time to tackle it. Make sure your voice is heard by participating in town meeting on Tuesday, June 22nd and town elections on Saturday, June 26th. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of Town Talk. Thank you. The chair recognizes former Board of Health member and advisory member Jim McCollum. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. This sounds like a marvelous project. The number, the latest number I heard was not 19 million, but 25 million. The impact that will have on our tax base is 68 cents per thousand dollars of, of assessed value. That's going to cost us almost $400 a year. I have no intention whatsoever of using this facility. I've heard complaints from seniors that to combine the senior center and the recreation center puts the seniors in the same building with the kids playing basketball. I don't think the seniors want to be in the same building with the kids playing basketball or volleyball or whatever else they're going to be doing. The next issue, which was mentioned in the, in the video, is we need a new police station and a new fire station, and the DPW is asking for a complete renovation of their facility. If $400 a year for this community center project is replicated three more times, we're talking about some big money added to our taxes. I don't think this is a good project. That building is old. It was built in the 40s, and the, the gymnasium with a cast concrete roof was built as a bomb shelter in the 40s. And I've been told that this is the only roof in the entire town of Pembroke that has never leaked. <laughs> so to tear it down would kind of be dysfunctional. I highly recommend voting against this project and move on to the police station, fire station, and DPW. And before COVID-19 set in place, that building was buzzing with activity. If this is rebuilt the way it's planned to be rebuilt with taxpayer money, I understand that 
prohibits the use of any retail businesses in there. One of the retail businesses in there today, or was before COVID-19, is the daycare center, which had dozens and dozens and dozens of kids in there every single day, playing and running around and using the gymnasium. That would not be allowed. Where are all those people going to have their kids cared for while they go off to work, if they ever manage to get back to work? So I highly recommend voting this down. Thank you. So there is a, a fair number of people who wish to speak, and we'll recognize them all. I, I, if they so choose, I will give the proponents or town manager a, a, a chance to respond to some of the questions that were posed, but that's not required. So if they're if they care to do that, they can uh, stand. So we're, we'll alternate back and forth, and I'm going to ask you for your name. Yeah. yeah. Your, My name is John Tinker. Um, I'm in Elm Street, Pembroke. Um, I, I realize that that building is old, and it would be a Sisyphean labor to try to fix it. But I would like to recommend that we have other open areas in town that could be used that are not used at this time. For example, within walking distance of the town hall are three facilities that have kitchens, meeting spaces, and are, are handicapped accessible. Uh, the three are the, the, the church, the First Parish Church, the DAR Hall, and the Pembroke Library. And there are two other places in town that are not, that are not being used, and that is the Bethel Chapel on 53, and the East Pembroke Community Club on Taylor Street. So there are other places in town where people can meet that have facilities that could be used. And I don't think they're used effectively at this time. So I recommend instead of a new building, which we're going to have to staff and maintain for, for the near future or the long future, that we demolish the existing high school uh, and create community open space on the site instead of another building on the site. Uh, the bricks from the demolition could be used for raised beds, for gardening, for seniors, building pathways. You could build a skate park for the younger set, and a park could be set aside for um, a jungle gym for the younger kids. So we'll have community open space in the site instead of another building. Thank you. Chair recognizes former Selectman and Planning Board member Bob DiMarzo. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate Andrew Sullivan for bringing this so far. He's really worked very hard and has been very, very persistent. And he's also been very generous. Uh, early on, he contributed some money to early uh, plans out of his own pocket. And for the campaign this far, he's actually had his corporation pay over $8,300 to do all the advertising and so on. So he is committed to it. Um, hired a good advertising campaign company, uh, Fulcrum East Campaign Consultants, and they've done a good job of putting their side of the story out there. But I, I think there's other things that need to be discussed, and as other people have pointed out, about the project. Um, first of all, a couple of times during the whole campaign, it's been said that the plan is shovel-ready. We've heard that before in past years for federal government. It's not shovel-ready. Uh, their own timeline puts it five months away, which I disagree with. It's probably seven or eight months away before they can even put a shovel in the ground. Construction cost of $19 million. Uh, they have never said anything officially of $25 million. Um, there's been some rumors around, and, and I don't think that's true. But for 33,000 square feet, that's about $575 a square foot. Um, it's anybody's guess as to what it's going to come in at this point. But they have built some contingencies into, into their bid, uh, their estimate, and I, I give them credit for that. But nobody can really say what's going to happen with this plan. Um, as the um, Bill Chenard said, uh, a lot of plans are coming in over budget from other towns. Bill didn't say that. I'm sorry. That was in the Patriot Ledger. Uh, and what these towns or cities are doing is they're cutting things. And the current plan does have things that I think actually need to be cut, not maybe cut. For example, it has these nice double barn doors. And they said people can come and go, have them wide open, and it's nice. Well, that whole construction is not going to be cheap. And you're never going to have that building 
wide open for people to come and go in today's times and security. On the roof of the gymnasium, and I question whether we need two gyms. We have five already through this town. One should be sufficient. Instead of the regular peak, there's another cap or peak above that, if anybody uh, remembers that. And on either side, from front to back, is windows. I don't know, maybe it's 120 feet, whatever it is. Maybe 18, two feet tall, or whatever. I guess the thought is it's gonna provide some light way up there. The construction cost of that versus a simple peak is astronomical. The amount of light, light that comes in from the north is minimal. From the south, you may get some. It may save some light, lighting cost, but it's going to be a heat loss, and the construction cost is huge. Just think about how, to, well, anybody knows framing, how that's going to be framed. Um, we've been told that the plan is a placeholder. It's not the final plan. It's not. The interior is not final. It's not right. If you look at what's out there and what's been proposed, all you've been shown is little tiny pictures. I have to use a magnifying glass on my phone to magnify it to see what the, the uh, verbiage says and what the rooms are. For example, the Commission on Disabilities Office is 81 square feet. That's less than three sheets of plywood. Put a desk in there, a chair, a filing cabinet, some disabled person is going to walk in there and shake their head and say, I can't get in here. The janitor's closet, way too small. The dining seating area next to the large kitchen, so there, there's an open passageway. So you have a kitchen, you have chairs with people eating right here, and then all those hot and sweaty, pe hot and sweaty people like I am with this heat are coming by them to use the bathroom, the showers, and the gym while they're having their soup and their sandwiches. It doesn't make sense. It is not the final plan. Um, let's see. Operating cost. It was a number, I don't know, 125,000, 180,000, and they're talking about using revenues to help balance that. I don't believe that that number will work with the, if you look at the number of staff people in the building, it's higher than we have now. And they even have an off, a nurse's office, with a nurse's office, another room, and four chairs and a waiting room. For a nurse, we're gonna have a nurse there? That's a hundred some odd thousand right there. And employees and the pay. So you can't count on the revenue for those usage of the rooms. And if those rooms are not used and we don't get the revenue, this board is gonna have a problem balancing the budget. So I don't think you can count on that as operating cost. Um, we have a lot of pressing needs, police and fire. I've recently toured the police and fire departments. And I won't go into all the things that are wrong with it, but the police department has plywood floors. They have cramped quarters. They have things in the jails that are not safe, jail cells that are closed. Um, a fire department has a cinder block wall that's cracking, a steel plate on the floor so the fire engine doesn't sink into the floor. The roof was leaking today. How strong is Pembroke financially? Not really. Not really at all. We finally put 25000 into stabilization, and that was pretty good. But over the past years, we've been selling land, getting some cell tower, solar, one-time revenues, but selling a lot of land to help balance the budget. In 2007, when I left office as a selectman, we actually got our stabilization fund, and that's the town's rainy day fund, this savings fund. We got it up to $369,000, round number. Today, we have $1,497,592, and that last number I got from the treasurer collector and the town accountant. You may think that's pretty good, but we really didn't save that money. $969,546 came from a gas lawsuit, some federal lawsuit, super fund, whatever, that every city and town got. So the bottom line is, over the 14 years, excluding today's $25,000, We've put $159,046 in the bank. 14 years, we saved about $11,000 a year for something catastrophic that happens to this town. We're not really financially strong. Let's see, let me go back. Um, we have two food pantries in town. There's over 700 registered families, of which two to 300 families use the food pantry every week. 
Um, to some people, this amount of money doesn't matter. To others, it's going to make a difference. And when you add all the other things that are coming down the line of water department, we have oh, roughly 53 miles of asbestos pipe in this community. A lot of it around the lakes and ponds. 53 that have to be removed to the tune of $75 million. You know where that payment's going to come. Trash is going up. Water's going up. And um, I think when you add all the things coming down the pike, do we really want something that we wish or we would like we ha to have? Or do we need to really focus and pay for what we need? In a closing cost uh, talk, a friend of mine said to me, Bob, what's with all this in the community center? It's like you have a house, and it has leaky pipes, bad heat, needs electrical work, it needs septic work, it needs a new roof. You don't have a lot of money, but you have this old, overground, above ground steel pool that works pretty well. And you're looking at an in-ground fiberglass pool with a big patio, lights, waterfall, and so on. So are we going to put our needs or our wants before us? Thank you. Chair recognizes, uh, if you could state your name. And Hi, my name is Gretchen Emmett, Kingston, Massachusetts. I am the director of the Council on Aging for Pembroke. This past year has been a learning experience for us. The need for services were at an all-time high, even though we were closed a good portion of the time. From food needs to mental health needs and everything in between, we learned that how much we really need a larger space. The first couple of months, due to the food pantries not being opened, we were asked by the town if we could help on a weekly basis supplying groceries for up to 80 families. Of course, we did. However, this took up two, our two large rooms and required a lot of logistics. Somehow we managed. We really should have been able to also provide meals to many of these residents, not all who were seniors. However, we do not have a kitchen that would enable us to do so. Knowing isolation was devastating so, to so many, we opened Monday through Thursdays in July for two programs each day that required pre-registration so that all COVID regulations would be upheld. The classes were only open for six to eight people, as that is what our largest space would hold. Many more wanted to participate on a regular basis, but we did not have the space that would enable us to do so. The end of November found us closing again due to high positive test counts. Sounds like the COA could take a break, right? Not at all. Things got suddenly busier. From December 1st until the end of March, we received over 9,000 phone calls. My staff is amazing and humble, but were spread too thin and overwhelmed. They were happy to handle these calls, but we would have been so happy to have volunteers come help us but we did not have the space that would enable us to do so. Although we were able to vaccinate many at the COA with various clinics, we could have done more, but we did not have the space that would enable us to do so. The 2010 census states that we have approximately 3,000 seniors in town over the age of 60. The pandemic showed us a very different number. In the past year, we had contact with just a little over 6,300 residents over the age of 60. 3,500 of them women, 2,800 of them men. This number is mind-boggling. We know that when the 2020 census numbers come in around the 1st of September, it will prove how large our older population is and how the building we are currently in will not enable us to provide what those seniors of all ages need or want. On a side note, many of our older residents are helping raise their grandchildren at this point in time. Would it not be amazing if the grandparent could come to a grandparent child group while their grandchildren are in the other room shooting hoops or having their own group? Currently, we do not have the space that would enable us to do so. How about our eight-week Inspire Adult Evening Education courses we hold each semester? This semester, we have cardio drumming, and a history class exploring the presidents from 1944 to 1974. If we had a new community center, we could offer four or more classes per semester, and we could have more than 12 participants per class. Right now, the space does not enable us to do so. So much can be accomplished to aid in the mental health and physical health of residents of all ages with this new building. 
And please know that if for some strange reason this doesn't pass, you will see me standing here before you again shortly, requesting anywhere from $10.8 million to $12.5 million for just a senior center. Please be considerate of your vote. And everyone's putting a, you know, a money thing. You can't, you can't put a, a cost on the quality of life for seniors or children. Chair recognizes Joe Supa, our still our director of weights and superintendent of weights and measures. Correct. And when I, being the director of superintendent of weights and measures, when I have to balance a scale, it has to be accurate. Same with the gas pumps; they have to be accurate. I know Andrew. I'm a friend. I consider Andrew one of my friends. About four months ago. I called them because I just found out about this about four months ago, believe it or not. Um, I don't have Comcast, I have DirecTV, so I don't have the um, cable ready thing to watch this on cable. But um, Andrew and I discussed it and I offered my help. It was kind of too late at that point because everything was in, was in play. But there's a lot of avenues I feel that we've missed. Um, I've got six grandchildren. Three of them live in this town. And a community center would be great. And I'm all for a community center. But I think the way we're going about this, we missed a lot of opportunities. And that's some of the things I discussed with Andrew. Number one, we should consider a public-private partnership. We should consider there's going to be a lot of COVID relief funds that are going to be available for buildings, for recreation buildings. Have we talked to our legislators about that? I don't know. Um, you know, we say it's going to be great for senior citizens. The reason why senior citizens needed a lot of food at the food bank because they're strapped with money. It's very expensive. So is it strapping them more with money going to help them? I think not. Um, steel and lumber. My son is actually building a prefab in Pembroke. Within four months, the cost of the prefab went up $20,000 because of the cost of um, materials. That's four months. And that's only an 1,800 square foot building. It went up $20,000. They say steel and lumber is only 10% of the project. Um, that represents two and a half million dollars and prices have doubled since the estimate. Um, Continuities. Backers say that it's only 19 million. It's not 19 million. It's a lot more than 19 million. Maybe if we put an amendment in this that says it can't go over 19 million, it might be something that could be feasible for people to actually want to vote for it. I don't understand why it's more important than the police and fire. About a month ago, I had to call 911 because I had a high blood pressure problem. The fire department and the police were there within minutes. They, their public safety they should come first. They're the ones that protect our kids and watch over our kids. So I feel that we should put this, temporarily postpone it for a year. I will gladly work with Andrew to get funding and to work on getting this done because I want it done. But let's focus on the police and fire department. Um, we need to also include taxpayers in the cost of maintaining and running the center. And to me, this isn't the right time and we're not being told the true costs. And it's funny because when I talked to my younger son about this, he pointed out, he goes, I don't smoke pot, okay? So he goes, Dad, did you know that Rockland just got a million dollars from a dispensary that they approved in their town. The town of Plymouth got 300,000 
from a pot dispensary. Why don't we have a dispensary? All the people back then voted for it. <laughs> Honestly, we, we could, if we're gonna make, if we're gonna make three million dollars, let's earmark it to public safety if we, if we have a, a dispensary. Plymouth has it, all our surrounding towns are getting them. It's almost like, it's crazy. But, I, you know, that's something we could take up on a later date. I figured I'd add some comedy to all this. <laughs> but um, I really feel this just isn't the proper time and we should postpone it for a year. Let us get some other people involved to help Andrew and see if we can get some funding, get our legislators more involved and make this truly a shovel-ready project. Chair recognizes Tommy Driscoll, member of the Board of Health. Thomas Driscoll, 21 Cedar Terrace. Andrew, a couple questions for you. You did a tremendous job with this. It's great. Um, I want a new rec center. I think we all want a rec center. Um, as other people have said, it's probably not the right time coming out of pandemic. But I do have a couple questions for you. Why was the advice from the town manager to bundle the projects for the t uh, public safety building not taken into account by the selectmen and your, and your committee? Andrew? Andrew Sullivan. We felt we were uh, way ahead of schedule as far as the public safety. There was no, it wasn't even a committee formed and we've been working on our project for about three years and in discussions with, I, I never had a discussion with the town manager where he was talking about bundling it to me and I pretty much followed his lead and it was never, there was never a talk amongst our committee or with the board of selectmen to package it. So when you came and approached the selectmen with the warrant, we just have to be careful about the debate and yep. make sure it goes through the chair and it can't be a debating Apologies, society back Mr. and Moderator. forth. So the chair will recognize Tom Driscoll. Um, when he, when uh, the town manager came in front of the select board, I believe you were there because you were presenting the uh, article for the community center, he suggested bundling the projects. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I feel like you guys pushed it to the side and didn't even have a discussion about it. I was wondering why. Chair, I'm asking chair, the select, the select well, board, it, it, or it, Mr. I mean, Mr. Sullivan doesn't remember okay, it, so I'm asking the, the chair. Board. The chair will say the chair cannot compel anyone to answer any question from the audience. However, obviously, the chairman of the board wants to respond. The chair of the selectmen, Dan Tribuco. Uh, so the the project were never considered to be bundled. I have no idea where you're getting that information. The police and fire have been considered to be bundled at, at different times but never the community center, the police station, the fire station, because they were so far apart, so far apart in planning and in committee work. This project has been being work, worked on and studied for, for three years in committee. Three years that included going to every single town, department, and committee to see what they needed, what their needs were, do a needs assessment. So. We know what the programming is in the building, know how to size the rooms in the building, and know what the town's wants and needs are. So that started three years ago. The police station and the fire station, back in 2018, if you remember, there was an override uh, for the police, fire, and DPW that failed. So the police and fire had to start from scratch, and they have, don't even, they still to this day, do not even have a committee formed for a brand new police that's not true. We, we there still is not a committee seated and active. Okay. Oh, I. I right, so one more question, and then we. Have to sure, absolutely. Don't want to speak, so I'm not trying to shut anyone down. We no, just have a lot to. Just people. Mr. Want Shinod, to am I mistaken when you made that suggestion during a selections meeting, or am I wrong? The chair recognizes Bill Shinod. So there was a very, very brief discussion. Mm -hmm. um, we were proposing police and fire and, and we formed the police as the, the sure. members of the board have stated here this evening. Um, I'm not sure that there was ever serious consideration. But it was suggested at a selectman's meeting, right? Am I wrong? Well, I mean, I heard we, that coming We cannot have a debating sure. society Absolutely. back and forth. That's not Sorry. the way this works. So you've asked one more question. You can certainly be recognized later on. I want to move to the next 
person who's been up for a while, and after all these years, I should remember your name, and I don't. I'm sorry. Jim Kincaid. Jim Kincaid. 69 Spring Street. Chair is Jim Kincaid. I'm 76 years old. If we need another three years, another four years, I'll be 80. It's time to do it now. I'm on the uh, uh, Council on Aging. I deliver Meals on Wheels. I'm a, I'm a disabled vet, and I've had it. The chair, again, will try to recognize uh, people in the order in which they stood, so we'll go to this gentleman over here, if you could state your name. Mr. Chairman, my name is Jim Agnew, Herringbrook Lane, and I'm a member of the Pembroke School Committee. I want to thank Mr. Kincaid. Uh, he failed to mention that he's also the uh, Committee representative from the American Legion for the Boy Scout Troop here, 105 in, in Pembroke, and he does a great job for us. <laughs> this week I voted yes, uh, and I hope many of you will do the same thing, both tonight and on Saturday. There's never going to be the perfect time for a project like this. There is always going to be the fire station, the police station, and if not that, There'll be a school renovation where there'll be traffic congestion that needs to be addressed. There will always be competing priorities. That's just the nature of living in a community like Pembroke. So what I'm asking, what my friends are asking, is that we not think about this as the construction of a building, but this is the investment we need, a strategic investment in Pembroke that is multi-generational. Science proves now, healthcare proves now that bringing together seniors and youngsters is a healthy environment. We have the ability to do that and we can be a shining star for the South Shore and for the Commonwealth. So I appreciate the work that the committee's done. I appreciate the work that the select committee has done and I hope you'll support this effort. It's the right thing for Pembroke. It's never gonna be the perfect time, but it is the time and it's needed now. Thank you. Chair recognizes Becky Coletta from the Select Board. Am I on? Okay. In preparation for this meeting tonight, I went back and pulled some of the prior records from the prior committees who've looked at this, including some committees that you, Mr. DeMarzo, served on. The first committee was, um, the original committee was in 2003. The next committee I could find was 2010. And then in 2012, and then in 2013, the board, the board of Selectmen voted that it was more economical to demolish this building and build a new building. Now at that time, the renovation cost in 20, let's see if this was October 2012, the renovation cost for that building was about $7.8 million in 2012 dollars. And we didn't do it. We didn't build a new building. I moved here in 2007 from Hanson, about a month after my son was born. He's now 14. He's getting ready to go into high school. So he spent his whole life trying to take advantage of rec center programs as best they could offer them in that building, which sometimes, quite honestly, I don't understand why we let kids in. If you've been in it lately, you wouldn't either. When my son was in sixth grade, we did a shoe drive. And I had to go in and we stored the shoes in one of the empty floors at the um, community center. It was horrible to breathe in that building when you're going up and down to get those shoes. And I was only there for an hour or two because someone else had put them there. I just had to get them out of there. It's not a building that anybody should be in right now. I went back and looked at the pictures that were done back in, I think those pictures were from a much earlier time period, before 2012, maybe around 2012. The buildings bowed, like the, the bricks on the building are literally pulling away from the wall, letting in moisture, creating instability in that building. We shouldn't be in that building. We keep saying another year or another two years. The cost, the estimated cost at the time, there was a proposal to build a $7 million building, which really didn't bring in the Council on Aging and meet the Council on Aging's needs. 
This building, this project that people have worked on for the last three years gives us what we need both for council and aging and for um, recreational programs for all ages. The other thing is the select board, when this project started to be brought before us this year, we weren't unified. We had very different opinions about whether this was a good idea coming out of a pandemic. We had a, ideas about whether police and fire should take priority. We had these discussions at the select board and we came to a unanimous decision to support this project. It wasn't a unanimous, unanimous decision to start with. We ended up there because we went through the numbers. One of the numbers that we looked at is what happens to our debt curve over the next so many years. We have debt exclusions that we've done in the past. When those, that debt is paid off, we have to come back and look for people to approve the new project for new debt, right? So we'll have to come back for the public safety building. But what happens is that there's gonna be money that right now we're spending to service that debt, that as the years go on, we won't be spending on that debt. So that's why we feel that we can then do a public safety building without coming back and asking for a ton of money. People are saying that this project at $19 million is, that's a ridiculous number. We have people who have looked at it. Our town manager has been looking at other projects that have been going out to bid. And the bids are coming in with the, in line with the estimates. People are talking about lumber cost that jumped up in the spring. Reports were out yesterday that showed that lumber prices have started to go down and stabilize again. The belief is that by the fall, there's a good chance that a lot of the supply chains that were disrupted by COVID are gonna be back up and running. Putting it off means that right now, people are bonding at less than 2%. There's a hunger in the market for municipal bonds right now that may not be there next year. It may be more expensive next year just from the bonds. And then the other thing is, um, you know, it's not that we're not doing anything on police and fire. If you've been watching our meetings, we approved the committee for police and fire to look at a public safety building, to look at the needs, to do a needs assessment, to come up with a conceptual design. My personal hope is that by the fall, we've just tonight, I don't know if anybody was paying attention, but in the capital budget, we funded $150,000 for a conceptual design of a public safety building. That was funded tonight. We're not waiting. We're not putting public safety behind this. We're just doing these things as they're ready. We have, the idea is that we could come forward, the reason I advocated for doing 150 now, coming to our next town meeting and asking for a million or a million and a half to fund the actual engineering. Once we have buy-in from the town, that this is the project we want to do for public safety. Then we go back and we do another debt exclusion, keeping in mind that we're going to then be looking at our debt curve and how we fund that and how we bond that takes into account that debt curve. Finally, I'm sorry, I'm almost done. As a member of the planning board for six years, we've had developers tell us that they can't make use of property in the town center for any sort of retail or commercial purposes. I think the community center is dead weight on our town center right now. From an economic development standpoint, this town center gives us uh, a tenant, the way at a mall, when I was in the satellite business, MTV was our anchor tenant. You need something to draw people to an area. This community center will be a beautiful draw that can help with the economic development of the town center that we've had developers tell us for the last six years that I've been on the board. They've said we have to build more residential in the town center because we can't make it go with business or commercial. I think if we have a vibrant community center and a vibrant center and heart of our community, we can make it work and we can bring more of the type of businesses that will create a walkable, livable town center. So I hope that you'll support this community center now.
chair recognizes former select board member Michelle Bird. Hi, Four Station Street. I'm also on the committee with Andy. Um, and I just wanted to share with you a quick story about why I joined the committee three years ago. I was doing an open house in Hanson, and people came through, and they didn't like the house. The wife didn't like it. And I said, well, actually, I have, a, I have another house in Pembroke in the same price range if you'd like to go see it. And she said to me, oh, no, we won't move to Pembroke. Your roads are all torn up, and you have that abandoned building in the center of town. I was horrified. I said, abandoned building? First of all, the roads are being worked on. That's a state project. That's nothing to do with the town. She goes, you people don't have any money in Pembroke. I said, I don't understand what the problem is. What's the abandoned building that you're talking about in the center of town? She said, that brick building. I said, that's our community center. She said, oh, great, even worse. <laughs> so I understand she's probably only, you know, a minuscule of the amount of people. But as a realtor, I can tell you the first thing people do when they come to town and they're not familiar with the area is they drive through the center. So I just wanted to let you know that $133 a year, you're going to get that back in your property value if we have a beautiful new building in the center of town. Chair recognizes former regional element, Carol Dodge. Carol Dodge, West Elm Street. My oldest son is the last graduating class of Center School. 1981. The building is a disgrace. I understand every other community has a senior center that people use. Uh, I have a vibrant life that I don't need the center, but I need the building in the center to disappear and a brand new building to happen so the next generation of athletes in Pembroke can have the same abilities that my children had growing up here. I ask you all to please be in favor. I'm on a set income. It doesn't matter. We need that building. Thank you. Chair recognizes Peg Struzik. Peg Struzik, Old Tree Road. Um, sometimes your wants become your needs. 25 years ago, I was in a group that stood in this town meeting and we asked for money to clean Oldham and Furnace Pond. Money was never appropriated, it never got done. The Army Corps engineers were with us and they said, you let it go too long, your ponds are dead. Well, those ponds are now damn near dead. I don't think there's anybody who lives on those ponds or around those ponds that don't wish we had fixed it then. We have kids who need indoor recreation places. We have seniors who need more room. It's a need. At this day and age, it's a need. So I ask you please to vote for it, and if it does pass, please remember you need to go back on election day to reinforce your vote. Thank you. Chair recognizes Deb Wall, our library director, and still the town's expert webmaster. <laughs> Uh, Deborah Wall, Woodbine Ave. I have lived in this town almost 20 years now, and when I came to the town, they were talking about the community center. And then there was one study going on, and I said, that's great, it's gonna look awesome next to the library, and we can do collaborative programs. Never happened. Then the next program come up, and I volunteered for that one, so I was in the one, 2000, 2012, I'm glad Becky did this, because that's why I stood up, because nobody was talking about that. Everybody's talking about it, it's only been three years. It has been 20 years plus, probably, that this town has been talking about this community center. And this committee looked at the work that the prior committees had done. They aren't starting from zero. And as they said, they talked to everyone who knew. And it's hard to think that people didn't know that this has been going on. It's been going on a long time. Andrew's been out there knocking on doors and pounding the pavement. And this is just such a no-brainer to me. Um, for a lot of reasons, and the senior center is obviously primo because the building that they're in, which was the library at one point, is ridiculous to try to fit all the wonderful programs that they do and can do or could do someplace else. But it's beyond that. It's recreation. What they try to do in the facility that they currently have, they can't. They could be running amazing programs for kids, adults, all ages, if they had a decent facility to do that. We need this building. It is not a want anymore. It is a need. That building is a disgrace, and it's unhealthy, and it needs to go.
Chair recognizes the gentleman to my right, if you could state your name. And my name is Stephan Roundtree. Um, I live on Forest Street, 155 in Pembroke. I'm on the planning board. I authored a uh, open space plan in 1999 for Pembroke that then became a master plan. And center to our master plan was a town center, primarily because communities don't communicate very well the way they're currently designed, the way all the separate committees interact separately, and we all have to try to watch all of this separate activities and manage and understand it. I have a plan in front of me with all of these articles that were dealt with with all the different committees, and to know where our town is going is missing from all of this, right? We don't have a master plan of where we're going as a town. I just heard 6,300 people that are over 60 in this town. If those people aren't using our elderly centers to learn about how to get old and manage your finances, manage your home, manage your health, talk amongst groups of people to figure out how to live in old age, you're missing out on opportunities. Um, I just put my mother in a nursing home three years ago. And uh, two months after doing that, I went to the community center in Hingham and found out that most of the people in that community center were friends of hers. My whole family couldn't convince her to change her lifestyle and change her life plan. Those people could have done that because they had known her for 30 years. So she didn't have the wisdom to use the community center. And all of you right now need to understand that this is how you make good decisions. You have all these people thinking about the finances of the town on a regular basis. That's all they do is crunch numbers and figure out where we're going. The fact is most of us here don't know where we're going because we don't have a master plan for them to point the direction. So I, I ask you all to vote for this, to get this community center done, and then to use it. You want to lower your taxes? Put that on the plan. You want to raise more money with the land that's going to come for sale with the 63 people that are, the, the 6,300 people that are in their 60s? All that land's going to come for sale. What's going to happen with it? That's what an open space plan does and a master plan does. So you're all involved now. Be involved in the community center and for the future of the town. So I say vote for it, make it happen, because it's the core of what's going to make this town survive. And that's it. Chair recognizes former advisory board member Matthew McNeely. Mr. Moderator, I would ask you to move the question. Seeing that there's nobody else at the microphones, I think this is a good time to move the question. Okay. The, the, um, if, Matthew, if you would be obliged, the um, town manager, the motion to move the question is always in order. It's not debatable. Um, however, for the sake of informational purposes, the town manager uh, has signaled he'd like to take one minute to answer a specific question. And if that's okay with you, then I'd like to allow it. This time? Okay, thank you. The chair recognizes Bill Chenard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to take just one minute to, to give you some, some facts. Um, as a town manager, it's my job to give you the facts necessary to make an informed decision. Um, and, and I think that it's very important. Um, a previous speaker noted that uh, this project could be more than 19 million. I'm telling you right here and now, it could be more than 19 million, but not without coming back to you for another vote. This vote tonight caps this project at 19 million. So I want to make that very clear. The town cannot spend more than 19 million of taxpayers' dollars on this project without coming back to town meeting. Now, could we get grants and earmarks? Absolutely, but those grants and earmarks aren't available until you, the voters, commit to this project. No one's gonna give us a town money, potentially millions of dollars, until we support the project and move forward. Um, as far as a member of the board previously noted that our, our debt curve, I've said, showed several times, I even have it here, you can't see it, but I'm gonna tell you the debt's here, 
it's going here. In fact, the debt curve today on debt excluded projects is over $1.8 million. Um, over the next five and a half years, the debt will be $276,000 on debt excluded projects. So we do have capacity. It'll have to come before you. It'll have to go before the voters for the police and fire station. We are not, or I am not, and I know this board is not ignoring police and fire station, the other needs of the community. We are actively pursuing earmarks and grants for our roadways. Um, OCPC, uh, Old Colony Planning Council, has given the town of Pembroke through the uh, state's TIP program more money as a percentage of our population than any other town in Plymouth County. Um, route 14, Route 36, Route 53, and we are gonna continue to pursue those things so our roadways are improved. We're looking at every potential method that we can do that and including, included in that is chapter 90. Um, and just as a final note, I know I already said it, but we are not ignoring police, fire, and DPW. Um, I'm gonna take a, a bit of latitude until he cuts me off and say I wanna thank those departments and every single department of this town for the last year. It has been an incredible, incredible challenging task through COVID for our public safety, for our DPW, for all of our employees in this community and especially our school teachers and our school department. So from me to them, thank you very much. Chair recognizes Matthew McNeely. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move the question, please. Is there a second? The motion is made and seconded. Um, so the motion to move the question is most always in order. It's certainly in order now. Uh, it's an up or down vote. It's not debatable. If you choose to uh, support the motion, we will go right to the question. All those in favor of Matthew's motion to move the question to go right to the vote, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and I declare it so voted. Um, <coughs> this requires a two-thirds vote. Um, the chair understands it may be close, and if it's too close to call, then we'll do a standing vote, which we can do, uh, the tellers are prepared to do uh, fairly quickly. So all those in favor of the motion by Andrew Sullivan, uh, after great debate, uh, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The chair declares it passed and <laughs> having having reached the necessary two thirds necessary for passage and it wasn't even close. Um, it chair, we just have a couple items of business so the chair actually asks you to stick around. Uh, article three is the next item of business. Article three, whose chair recognizes John Scholl. It's a hard act to follow from advisory. I'd like not to thank the moderator for this number. We, Steve, should we give it a couple minutes? No. no! All right, sorry. Article 3, Water Enterprise Operation Budget. Move that the town appropriate the sum of $2,425,817 from water revenue to fund the fiscal year 2022 Water Enterprise Fund, as shown in Appendix C of the 2021 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed, no, please raise your hand. The ayes have it. We have one item left, that's Article 10. Um, before we take that, the chair, there are too many people that thank, so the chair won't engage in, uh, in long thanks. Um, I, the chair will just mention that um, these boards make it look easy, um, and it's not easy. Uh, town meeting and the progress, the work leading up to town meeting is a work in progress that started last year. Um, and so the chair thanks all the boards uh, for their efforts, um, particularly advisory board, in um, making this meeting go smoothly. One particular thanks, uh, the chair wants to thank the assistant town manager, Sabrina Chilcott. Did I get the title right? <laughs> Who's who keeps the chair focused, and that is not easy. Uh, Article 10 is the last item of business. The chair recognizes Matthew Rushing, who the chair misnamed as Matthew Norton during the last motion. 
Matthew Rushing. Please, Chair. Move that the town authorize the town manager and board of assessors to enter into an agreement for payments in lieu of taxes pursuant to general law chapter 59 subsection 5 clause 45th or any other enabling authority for taxes attributable to a solar electric generation facility located or to be located at 0 Habamock Street as printed in Article 10 of the 2021 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Second. Motions been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion by Matthew Rushing, please say, uh, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it. Dan Tribuco, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, moves that the town meeting stand adjourned. The motion is made and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.